This is section 23 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Ladies by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Delivered at the Anniversary Festival, 1872, of the Scottish Corporation of London. Mr. Clemens replied to the toast, The Ladies. I am proud indeed of the distinction of being chosen to respond to this especial toast to the ladies, or to women if you please, for that is the preferable term, perhaps. It is certainly the older, and therefore the more entitled to reverence. I have noticed that the Bible, with that plain, blunt honesty, which is such a conspicuous characteristic of the Scriptures, is always particular to never refer to even the illustrious mother of all mankind as a lady, but speaks of her as a woman. It is odd, but you will find it is so. I am peculiarly proud of this honor, because I think that the toast to women is one which, by right and by every rule of gallantry, should take precedence of all others, of the army, of the navy, of even royalty itself, perhaps though the latter is not necessary in this day and in this land, for the reason that, tacitly, you do drink a broad general health to all good women when you drink the health of the Queen of England and the Princess of Wales. I have in mind a poem just now which is familiar to you all, familiar to everybody. And what an inspiration that was, and how instantly the present toast recalls the verses to all our minds, when the most noble, the most gracious, the purest and sweetest of all poets says, Woman, O oh woman, er... Uh, Wom. However, you remember the lines, and you remember how feelingly, how daintily, how almost imperceptibly the verses raise up before you, feature by feature, the ideal of a true and perfect woman, and how, as you contemplate the finished marvel, your homage grows into worship of the intellect that could create so fair a thing out of mere breath, mere words. And you call to mind now, as I speak, how the poet, with stern fidelity to the history of all humanity, delivers this beautiful child of his heart and his brain over to the trials and sorrows that must come to all, sooner or later, that abide in the earth, and how the pathetic story culminates in that apostrophe, so wild, so regretful, so full of mournful retrospection. The lines run thus. Alas, alas, ah, alas, 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 and so on. I do not remember the rest, but, taken together, it seems to me that poem is the noblest tribute to woman that human genius has ever brought forth, and I feel that if I were to talk hours, I could not do my great theme completer or more graceful justice than I have now done in simply quoting that poet's matchless words. The phases of the womanly nature are infinite in their variety. Take any type of woman— and you shall find in it something to respect, something to admire, something to love, and you shall find the whole joining your heart and hand. Who was more patriotic than Joan of Arc? Who was braver? Who has given us a grander instance of self-sacrificing devotion? Ah, you remember, you remember well, what a throb of pain— what a great tidal wave of grief swept over us all when Joan of Arc fell at Waterloo! Who does not sorrow for the loss of Sappho, the sweet singer of Israel? Who among us does not miss the gentle ministrations, 
the softening influences the humble piety of lucretia borgia who can join in the heartless libel that says woman is extravagant in dress when he can look back and call to mind our simple and lowly mother eve arrayed in her modification of the highland costume sir women have been soldiers women have been painters women have been poets as long as language lives the name of cleopatra will live and not because she conquered george the third but because she wrote those divine lines let dogs delight to bark and bite for god hath made them so the story of the world is adorned with the names of illustrious ones of our own sex some of them sons of st andrew too scott bruce burns the warrior wallace ben nevis the gifted ben lomond and the great new scotchman ben disraeli mr benjamin disraeli at that time prime minister of england had just been elected lord rector of glasgow university and had made a speech which gave rise to a world of discussion out of the great plains of history tower whole mountain ranges of sublime women the queen of sheba josephine semiramis sairy gamp the list is endless but i will not call the mighty roll the names rise up in your own memories at the mere suggestion luminous with the glory of deeds that cannot die hallowed by the loving worship of the good and the true of all epochs and all climes suffice it for our pride and our honor that we in our day have added to it such names as those of grace darling and florence nightingale woman is all that she should be gentle patient long-suffering trustful unselfish full of generous impulses it is her blessed mission to comfort the sorrowing plead for the erring encourage the faint of purpose succor the distressed uplift the fallen befriend the friendless in a word afford the healing of her sympathies and a home in her heart for all the bruised and persecuted children that knock at its hospitable door and when i say god bless her there is none among us who has known the ennobling affection of a wife or the steadfast devotion of a mother but in his heart will say amen end of the ladies by mark twain read by john greenman